hello guys welcome to the kange household of faith it is another beautiful day and god is doing marvelous things listen guys today is the second right we are in the month of october november november <laughs> that's right in the month of november already and god is moving you know we have been marinating in the prophetic words that were declared regarding the month of november and it's been powerful and today we had our day of fasting and prayer for leaders all across the world and we yes. are grateful that all of these beautiful things are happening to the glory of god so yes Hallelujah. god is good welcome 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 so welcome, good to have you minister on ashley welcome minister kathy becker god bless you Hello. minister lisa bless you bless you bless you good to have you on good to have you on you're all welcome to the kange household of faith where we bring to you the word of restoration in, in the, the spirit, spirit of, of faith, faith. Nice. the word of restoration you in the today. spirit of faith nice. hi minister makita hey minister makita welcome good to have you on jesus jesus hello pastor kareen hallelujah bless the lord bless the lord oh my soul well we are going to get into the word pray and get into the word and see what father god is saying to us wow isn't god wonderful pastor Paul? he is he is right good god so let's go on and do the sharing thing sharing 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 i heard someone say today that they had been um they are in sales and some of their products had gone out of distribution for some time back order back order back order and behold november is here delivery came in so bless the lord oh my Hallelujah. soul it's god happening. is good so november is a month of delivery the things you have been expecting are going to be delivered right to your door amen hallelujah it could be your door as in your door at your job or your door the home you live in your door is your business hey <laughs> i like that one Woo -woo. glory so it's going to be exciting amen month of november hallelujah so we are going to share get into a time of prayer and then we move forward wimps is coming with speed yes hallelujah i am super excited Bless about the Lord, wimps. oh my soul I, i'm going to throw a challenge regarding wimps in a little bit i'm going to tell you guys this there's, there's going to be a challenge for wimps and um hopefully you are the winner hopefully you are the winner for the wimps challenge so pastor pauline yes sir can a woman who has a contractor's helmet on be in ministry of course of course exactly can a woman who is carrying a baby on her back and maybe holding one to the left and another one to the right be in ministry yes yes okay so that is where the challenge is right ladies i want you to go to your facebook page put uh, a, a symbol of a woman in ministry whether she's carrying a baby or she's cooking or just you know something about i am a woman doing this but i'm also a woman in ministry that's the challenge i'm a woman who does this and i'm also a woman in ministry see you at the whims women in ministry summit so that's the challenge mm -hmm. that's the challenge so you can go to your Facebook page and post something about yourself. You can do a selfie, you know? You can do a selfie and you say, I'm married and I'm also in ministry. Something. I have kids, but I'm also in ministry. I'm an entrepreneur and I'm also in ministry. Hallelujah. So that's the challenge. You can do that. Hello, Pastor Cynthia. Hello, Minister Ashley. I'm not sure what my thing is doing. Your thing is not sharing? Yeah. Thingy, share. 
Hallelujah. So we are very excited about tonight. And we are getting ready to pray and jump into the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. That's right, Minister Ashley. A woman's place is everywhere God calls her. Amen. Hello, Pastor Griffiths. God bless you, woman of God. Hallelujah. Blessings to your household. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. So we are women doing all kinds of things, and we are also women in ministry. So you can go ahead and put that there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we are going to Not pray. Not sure what the problem is. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is good. Hey, hey, hey. Let's see. Hey. All right. Maybe your machine will do the trick. I did. Okay, great. All done. I'm not sure what this is. Sharing, sharing, to do. sharing, sharing. Hallelujah. And then we had our last class yesterday mm -hmm. for the art of pastoring. And that was quite exciting. It, it was good. We had three beautiful sessions, and we've been getting a lot of feedback from that. That was really good. And um, we are looking forward to what God is going to do next. Amen. But right now, we are heading for WIMS. Yes, sir. You are heading for WIMS. Uh, but I'm looking forward to the prayer time next week. Yeah. So, so in the pastor's um, um, out of pastoring class, mm -hmm. we are going to be having a prayer time same time as the class mm -hmm. um the same time same time that the class usually would hold um seven to eight eastern mm -hmm. and we are just going to be in the place I'm of looking prayer forward to that. so that's going to be wonderful god is going to help us so we can pray amen amen we, god is going to help us pray so that our testimony will not be the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak hallelujah that will not be the testimony. The testimony will be the spirit is winning and the flesh followed suit. <laughs> That's right. In Jesus' name. There's no choice but to follow. That's right, Pastor John. Yay. Wims, here we come. That's right. Mr. Julita says, awesome class. Amen. Learned so much from the classes. Very That's enlightening. beautiful. That's beautiful. That's good to know. That's good to know. All right, Pastor Pauline. Do you think it's a good time for us to pray? Yes, sir. Come on, Every come on, time come on. It's a good time to pray. Hallelujah. Okay, let's do Hallelujah. This. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. There is no one like you, great Jehovah. Yes, you are awesome. We stand in awe of you. We stand in awe. We are grateful for your mercy. We are grateful for your grace. We are grateful for your voice. So grateful for your voice. Thank you, Jesus. And even tonight, in anticipation of what you have in store for us, we say thank you. We say thank you. For we know that light is about to come in a brand new way and we will be shifted to a new dimension. Thank you, Lord, for revelation. Thank you for light. We thank you that we are citizens of the Commonwealth of Israel. We are grateful to be partakers of your divine nature. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. Mm. We thank you for the blood that is speaking better things on our behalf mm. than that of bulls and lamb, than that of Abel. We thank you that the blood of Jesus is speaking wholeness and healing tonight the blood of jesus is speaking peace and prosperity the blood of jesus is speaking soundness of mind the blood of jesus 
is speaking life. Be glorified, Father. Be magnified. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. 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 It's by the blood of Jesus that we come into the presence of God. It's by the blood of Jesus that we are able to have a healthy relationship with him. If not of the finished work of Jesus on the cross, the shedding of the blood, there would not be any remission for sin. And we are so grateful that we can be called sons of God because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And the Bible declares... That by the blood of Jesus, we can come into the presence of God boldly. Boldly. Come boldly expecting to obtain mercy and find grace in time of need. So I encourage you, child of God, to come boldly even tonight expecting. Because your father is good and faithful like that. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You're faithful, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're faithful, you're faithful. So grateful for your presence. So grateful for your presence. So grateful for your love. So grateful for your presence. You're worthy, you're worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, you're worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy, Lord. Karava Sanda Yaralava Sandeva. Hallelujah. You're worthy, you're worthy, Lord. You're worthy. <laughs> you're worthy, Jesus. There's no one like you, Father. There's no one like you, Lord God. Worthy, worthy is your name. Worthy, worthy is your name. Worthy, worthy is your name. Antarabo Sakyara Labo Sandaya Maru. Worthy is your name. You're worthy, you're worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, you're worthy, Lord. Araba Satera Labo Santarabaya Taraba. You're worthy, you're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, you're worthy. Araba Siandi Rebu Sanda Yaraba Kasanta Yavan. Mighty, mighty is your name. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Hira la Bosianda Yanda Yaba. Antara la Masiando Robo Shandi Yeke Amanda Yaba. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. Thank you, Lord. 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 We magnify you, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. Haraba satara la bosotoria bosondo robo cosa. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We magnify you, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. Ora basanda yaraba yaka santa yaba. Oh, 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 oh. Ea yaba raba ya. Mari, mari, mari. Mascota rebra soto ya handa le bevicato. We magnify you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. 
It has been gripping you and almost paralyzing you, a paralyzing fear of death. But even now, it is written, you have been delivered by the authority of the blood of Jesus. The Bible declares that Jesus, through death, defeated the one who had the power of death so that you will be set free from the grip of the one who used to have the power of death. He no longer has it. You have been all your lifetime subject to bondage because of fear. But even now, that thing is broken off of you in the name of Jesus. Death has no power. It has lost its sting. The grave has lost its power over you in the name of Jesus. Whosoever has the son has life. The life of God is in you because you have given your life to Jesus. You have received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You have Jesus. And scripture declares, whosoever has the Son has life. The life of God. You have passed from death unto life. So the fear of death is not your portion in the name of Jesus. You will not die a second time because you have already passed from death unto life. You were crucified with Christ. This life that you now live in the flesh, you live by the faith of the Son of God who loved you and gave himself for you. Oh, death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? You have authority. You have victory. The grave and death cannot hold you. The grave and death could not hold Jesus, who is your master. It cannot hold you in the name of Jesus. So we break that fear off of you right now. In Jesus' name, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but he's giving you the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So it doesn't matter what the doctor's report has to say. You will not be afraid of death in Jesus' name. You are not dying before your time. You shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord in this land of the living in the name of Jesus. You shall be satisfied with long life. He says he will satisfy you with long life and show you his salvation because you dwell in the secret place of the Most High. So I command the fear of death to be broken off of your life right now in Jesus' mighty name. And if that is you, I want you to begin to declare out of your mouth, I have the Son of God, so I have life. I have the Son of God, so I have life. I have Jesus Christ as my Lord, so I have life in Jesus' mighty name. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. I don't care whether the doctors call it a death sentence. Oh no. <laughs> Who shall believe? Who can believe the report of the Lord? If you would dare to believe the report of the Lord tonight, it will superimpose itself over the report of the doctors and change that report of the doctors in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The things which are in the invisible realm, they are eternal. The things that you don't see with your physical eye. But the ones that you see with your physical eye, they are subject to change. They are temporal. So we decree and declare what the word of God has said about us. You have passed from death unto life. You have the son of God. You have life. The God kind of life. In the name of Jesus. You shall not die before your time. In the name of Jesus. So we refuse to fear. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Ready, Pastor Pauline? Yes, sir. Okay. 
So let's get into 1 Corinthians chapter 12 again today. And um, let's see how the Lord takes us in Jesus' name. So we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. A few things that, that we will highlight today as we go on with our study, right? Now, the Word of God says in, in, in verse 7, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. But that is not the full doctrine. Right? right? That is not the full doctrine. So we have, there are diversities of gift or gifts, but the same spirit. That's the first aspect of the doctrine. The doctrine of spiritual gifts. The doctrine of spiritual gifts, as Paul was teaching in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, is number one intended for everyone to see that whatever darkness can manifest in terms of witches and wizards and, and sorcerers and, and, and palm readers and mm -hmm. necromancers is all authenticated in God. And that whatever is done um, in, the, in the kingdom of darkness is a counterfeit. Right. It's not the real. Now, we know very well that we have been able to talk about what makes faith, faith, mm -hmm. and what makes unbelief, unbelief. Right. Or what makes faith, faith, and what makes fear, fear. Because faith is believing, and fear is also believing. Mm -hmm. But fear is the faith, or is the believing, let's put it that way, mm -hmm. that a person engages in when they decide to side with what the devil is saying rather than what God is saying. Right. And faith is the believing that a person engages in when they decide to side with what God is saying. That's right. right? So we don't have to look at it in terms of evil or good. That's right. Because one can also engage in believing what um, um, isn't the will of God, but then it's a good thing. Uh, oh, yes. You see that? Uh, and that's, and that one is really I like know, kind of right there, right there. And, and so delicate, it brings yes. in that peace that, that we ought to, to, to grasp. So when we are talking about spiritual gifts, Paul is making us know that while we were Gentiles, we were drawn onto dumb idols and, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. There is a level of spiritual manifestation of the supernatural, but its origin is the dark. Yes. It's the devil. So Paul is speaking to us about that which comes from God and has been authenticated by God. So that's what we are talking about. Right. So when you look at the gifts of the Spirit as mentioned here, the very first thing about spiritual gifts is this. The manifestation of the Spirit. Well, let, let's start from the beginning. Number one, the Holy Spirit can and does bring gifts to those who are born again. Yes. That's the first thing in the doctrine. Number two, there are diversities of gifts, but it is the same spirit. Mm -hmm. And by the word diversity, we mean um, multi-sided mm -hmm. of the same thing. So it is not just um, um, multiple things, but if one is picked out, you will notice that that one has many, many sides, sides to it. And so he, the word of God says he divides himself severally to every man as he wills. Verse 11. Verse 11. That's the other aspect of the doctrine. So if you just go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, and say the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all, that is not the full story. Right. The full story also involves... He divides himself severally to every man as... He wills. Mm -hmm. Now, it is important to highlight this because part of the doctrine is also covet earnestly. Mm -hmm. and, and I wanted us to look at that, that, that notion, covet earnestly. earnestly. What does it mean to covet earnestly? First of all, the word covetousness has a negative connotation to it. Covetousness means reach out for that which God has not given you. That is what to be covetous is. Mm -hmm. Reaching out for that which God has not given you. 
But when it comes to spiritual gifts, we are told to covet earnestly. Mm -hmm. Covet earnestly. Why? It's, it's weird. It's like saying uh, something is happening, but. And then you say the other thing. So, but seems to come and cancel this one. Mm -hmm. So when we are told to covet, we are told to engage in a stretching out. But earnestly speaks of you know, the earnest expectation, you know, a, a, a godly side to this hunger and thirst after spiritual mm. gifts. So we do not hunger and thirst after spiritual gifts because of how they will make us look. Come on, that's good. Right? We yes. do not covet after spiritual gifts because we are going to be superior over others. Mm -hmm. By the way, we learned in our art of pastoring class that superior people hurt people. Yes. Right? Superior Ooh, people hurt people. Really and, and, and so we don't want to have a sense of superiority because there are spiritual gifts in play. I was listening to a man of God earlier on today and, and he said something. He said, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, the, the time of stardom is over. Mm -hmm. But what you're seeing right now, this manifestation you're seeing now, it is God saying, I am super. I am big. And, and, and when you take that kind of manifestation of the spirit, right? God manifesting himself in a meeting, it is another way for God to, to tell you, go forward, I am with you. Yes. Go forward, I am validating what you're mm -hmm. saying. I'm endorsing. I'm endorsing what you're saying. What is and, happening. And, 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 and endorsing right. what is happening. So when we are talking about covert endlessly, then we are saying, Lord God, what is the truth about the Holy Spirit's provision for me? What is the truth about the Holy Spirit? What is the truth about the Holy Spirit's provision for me? So the Holy Spirit will not come upon you and have you prophesy just so that you can turn around and, and, and tell your sister that you are also important. Mm. So the, 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 spirit, the gifts of the Spirit are not for the purpose of self-validation. Every gift has to point to Jesus. Every gift has to point to Jesus yeah. and it is given at a certain time. It is to manifest at a certain time because a statement about the kingdom of God has to be made Amen. to one in need. Amen. Severally to every man, right? Yes. As he As wills. He wills. Number one, severally to every man to profit with all. Yes. Amen. Right? So Amen. there is an aspect of spiritual gifts that does not involve the bearer of the gift. Mm -hmm. the, the reason why God will have the, 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 the gift of prophecy upon your life is not so you will prophesy to yourself. Right. So the intention of spiritual gifts is to make the children of God or the sons of God servants of God. And servants of the people. Mm -hmm. So God wants us to serve as in a dish, right? The supernatural provisions of God. Oh, that's good. God wants us to serve as in a dish, the supernatural provisions of God. Yes. So if someone is looking for direction in God and they come to a prophet, a prophetess, you know, and they are sick in the face of God. That person is able to deliver the supernatural provision of God to that person. And they go back having profited because of the presence of that spiritual gift in that person's life. And that's what was happening in the Old Testament where they would say, we have to go to the seer right. in order to get an answer you know, to, to, to bring a solution to a need. Mm -hmm. And, and when we come now into the new Testament, before we get into the new Testament, God had already declared through the prophet Joel that in these last days, the spirit of God was going to be poured out upon all flesh. Yes. And everyone will be able to flow in this realm where you are able to access the presence of God, access the spirit of God mm -hmm. in a greater way because the, the veil has been torn. Mm -hmm right everyone has access yeah. to the father so it, it it brings us to this chapter where we are right now where we the, we see that the spirit of god can he is the one that decides because he has a will right he decides how he wants to distribute 
but we see that he distributes to everybody yeah. as he wills. As he wills. It's no longer just to the prophet or to the king or to you know to the priest mm -hmm. like we had in the Old Testament. But now, because all of us have been made kings and priests, everyone has access to that realm. Yeah. Hence, Paul saying, "Covet earnestly," mm -hmm. because if you earnestly desire, mm -hmm. come on, and you go for it. Yeah. You will experience the manifestation of these different giftings. Yeah. So even as we look at these things, right? We, we, I mean, we've taken some time to study on the spiritual gifts. Um, but it is important to talk about um, the, the, the placement of spiritual giftings. Okay. The placement of spiritual giftings. We, we, we should talk about the placement of spiritual giftings because God has spoken to us out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Mm -hmm. That there is a realm called the realm of administration. Right. Right? There is a realm called the realm of administration. And then there is a realm called the realm of operations. So, let's go to verse 4. It says, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of administration. So, there is a realm, and that realm is that of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God. So the, the, the word of God is showing us that there is a realm and that realm is administration. There is another realm and that realm is operations. Okay. So when you think about operation, you think about work. Mm -hmm. When you think about administration, you talk about management placement. of things, placement, right? Uh, how things ought to go, not go, you know, how you put them together, what conversations you're supposed to have on getting them better, and so on and so forth, right? Now, there are two things we have to consider. When we are talking about the operations, we are talking about what God intends to do and how he's doing it. Okay. Right? But when we, talk, when we are talking about administration, we are talking about the offices that are set. So it's like saying, I want to make a cake. Then someone would say, okay, I got you. What kind of cake? Uh, I want to make um, a chocolate cake. So you have the notion of a cake. Then you have what makes the cake have that definition. Mm -hmm. Then now the icing on the cake. So the icing will, will be part of the, the icing makes up the decoration and, and all of that around the cake. Now, if you just look at the cake, and you see this beautiful decoration externally and you end there then it's as if you've just looked at the gifts of the spirit and that's it but you have to go further inside and then look at oh it's a cake oh it's a chocolate cake so when we look at the word of god here there are two things we ought to take into account number one jesus is interested in setting up the offices mm -hmm. so there are spiritual gifts now we are talking about the diversities of spiritual gifts with the holy spirit mm -hmm. there are there are spiritual gifts that you would find with the office of a pastor mm -hmm. so let's talk about administration okay. administration will have uh guys i have this this habit so i cannot write what i'm saying <laughs> like i take notes like you're supposed to take notes okay so we, we have, administratively speaking, the offices will be that of a pastor, mm -hmm. that of a teacher, mm -hmm. right? That of an evangelist. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is nice. That of an apostle. And that of a prophet. Now, this is just an aspect of the Godhead. Mm -hmm. It is not all of it. Now, you would find that a pastor has his office within the local church. Mm -hmm. But an evangelist doesn't have his office within the local church. Mm -hmm. and a, an evangelist has his office outside of the local mm -hmm. church, but has his abode within, within the local the church. Local church. Yes. Th this is important for us to understand. Mm -hmm. So you can be evangelist all you want to be, there has to be a pastor over you. Oh, yes. So this is important information. Now, you also have a teacher. A teacher is planted in the church. A prophet 
Now, you remember the teaching we had about a prophet. There are different levels of prophecy. But there is the office of a prophet that is also having its base in the local church mm -hmm. because any prophet who does not have a pastor is about to cause trouble. Right. All right? So, a prophet has to have his base in a local church but can go as far as he wants to go. Now, God has set some prophets over nations. So you, they, they may find themselves having very unique assignments of traveling here and there, but they are not evangelists. Right. The evangelistic office is not the only office that warrants one to travel. Right? Mm -hmm. Then we have the apostle. The apostle is this guy who goes around with a message from the Lord. He's a sent one. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you're going to see in the life of, of an apostle is that he is over churches. So he has, uh, um, um, as it were, uh, yesterday in our, in, our, in our Art of Pastoring class, we saw that every child of God has uh, um, um, an aspect of pastoring within them. Mm -hmm. Because we ought to go out and bear fruit, just like the Word of God says in Matthew 28. Right. Teach them the things that I have taught you. Disciple so we are supposed to disciple them, right? So there is that aspect. So the apostle has this, but you can see that he's also above churches. Mm -hmm. Now, the, past, the apostle has not been told that he can't have a pastor. So I need for us to understand the beauty of the, of the pastoral office. The, the pastoral office says, as long as I am sheep, I need a shepherd. That's mm -hmm. all. Without us complicating anything about yeah. it. So when we consider this, like I said, the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist, the, the apostle, the prophet, but that's not all of the story because these are just offices. Mm -hmm. Then God will come in here and begin to make sure that the pastor is administrating properly. Mm -hmm. So we can read um, um, what these offices do in, in the book of Ephesians. So let's, let's just read that so we can tie this all together as God would have us do today. So we are in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4. Do you want to begin? Verse 11. Okay. It says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Now, this is the assignment. The administrative role is this. Number one, the perfecting of the saints. Right? For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. You see that administrative quality? Mm -hmm. So when God said all of this, it's so that we will not be tossed to and fro. This one comes, we are thrown. This one comes, we are thrown. No, the word of God through these different offices sets us in order. In order. Gets us grounded. Gets us grounded. Gives us the stamina we need so we cannot just overcome but go through storms of life unhinged and still be standing and still be standing <laughs> now pastor pauline mm -hmm. why is it important then to understand this and talk about these different realms it is because the holy spirit also divides himself severally to these people as he wills we, we are coming to the interesting part okay okay so then there are gifts that are particular to a pastor. Now, when I say particular, let's use the word relevant. Okay. As a pastor, what kind of giftings are relevant to your office? The Holy Spirit looks at you, sees the work that he has called you to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are talking about separate me, Paul and Barnabas for the work that I have called them, right? The Holy Spirit said that, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes. Now, he didn't say it of, of himself. He is in agreement with the Father and the Son. Right? So, he said that. Now, there are things that are particular to a pastor. A pastor who is pastoring in some part of the world may not have certain things relevant to that pastor as they would be to another pastor at some other part of the world. 
A pastor who is pastoring um, a certain culture may have different needs than a pastor who is pastoring yeah. multi-culture. Yes. Right? And so the Holy Spirit is going to come and say, I am going to bring this kind of gift to this person, right? So that it will benefit the people within that circle. God is so good. It's like you sending someone somewhere and making sure that they're equipped right. to carry out their assignment. Yes. So he, he, he calls you into an office and he gives you everything that you will need exactly. to be effective. To be effective. Yeah. So now, he goes to a teacher and does the same. Now let's look at a little bit of what the life of a teacher looks like. A teacher is called to break down the word of God in such a supernatural way right mm -hmm. and so expect the teacher to teach and you're thinking my god did i read that verse before <laughs> so the teacher says things that you don't see you look at the verse again like right what? you got all of that from that one verse. right so 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 <laughs> that is what is going to happen with the teacher so the question is as every believer is expected to move in miracle signs and wonders you ready for this Okay, as every believer, it's expected to move in miracle signs and wonders. The teacher may not be given the, the gift of miracles because the gift of miracles upon a person's life makes that person busy in the area of miracles. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the office of a teacher makes the teacher busy mm -hmm. about teaching. teaching. This is important for us to understand, right? It's important for us to understand. So but that does why... not mean that miracles will not happen when the teacher is teaching. No, because every one of us is called to release the word of God while Jesus accompanies us to make sure that his word is true. Exactly. So there will be miracles, but these miracles may not be, child of God, the stress tonight is may not be. Mm -hmm. It may not be the gift of, of miracles, miracles because once you operate in the gift of working of miracles, you become busy. Please, guys, keyword busy. You become busy with working the things that pertain to that gift. So a man's gift does not only make way for him, child of God, but a man's gift will keep him busy about the gift. A man's gift will not just make way for him, but a man's gift will keep him busy about the gift. Why is it important for us to understand this? So you don't wake up and say, Oh God, because we have been told to covet, co covet earnestly, mm -hmm. like I said, you know, we must consider the entire doctrine. Right. The entire doctrine of the gifts of the spirit we should consider um, um covet earnestly but but look at the, the the double nature that is introduced in that verse mm -hmm. to covet means to to stretch out or reach out for something that's not yours and then we are we are also told earnestly as in the earnest expectation you know mm -hmm. that word earnest Okay, if we put these two words together, what is God saying to us? Reach out to me, but reach out to me in accordance with my will. Reach out to me in accordance with what I have called you to do. Reach out to me in accordance with what I have placed within your being. So that you are not a teacher within a local church or a teacher operating in the office of a teacher. And then you tell the Lord to give you the gift or you, you set forth to covet the gift of the working of miracles. If, if, if the Holy Spirit gives you that gift, you will have to lose the other one. You have to lose the teaching? You will have to lose the teaching office. Hmm. Because the teaching office keeps you busy about the office. Meanwhile, the one in walking of miracles keeps you busy about walking of miracles. So, child of God, when I'm talking about being busy about something, I'm letting you see 
that if you maximize what the Holy Spirit drops upon you to do, you will notice that idleness will be far from your life. Remember, God has called us not just to manifest these gifts on the surface, but he has called us to come into maturity, to come into a place of excellence, to excel, excel, excel in whatever he has given us. So let's go further okay. because we are going to land. Let's go further. For us to understand further what God is saying to us, right? We talked about the gift of faith, right? In 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Mm -hmm. Let's go back right there. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So in 1 Corinthians, where am I? Okay, good. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we are told, verse 9, to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing. Oh, uh, yes, that's right. That's right. Yes, Lord. By the same spirit, to another the walking of miracles. So if we turn behind and look at people who have walked in the gift of walking of miracles, we notice that their ministries are always moving in conjunction with another person who has been called into the teaching ministry. Because by the time you execute this walking of miracles, you would find out that tiredness will be involved. So you may not have the time to sit down and teach the people. So, child of God, take note, we are talking about not just basic, uh, um, the basic operations of a child of God. We're talking about the offices. We are talking about the offices and how the offices engage the spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. So, if one is a pastor, the pastor can also be operating in a powerful level in teaching. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because the sheep has to come to you and get fed. Mm -hmm. Every now and then, that basic level that the pastor is operating in and the word of God that is going forth, will be validated by the miracle signs and wonder that follow the basic level. Mm -hmm. Now, when we begin to go up, the conversation begins to change. Okay. Now, at this point, we can have this conversation because as we talked about in our last class, to another faith, what kind of faith? Mm -hmm. Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Okay, so Abraham had faith. Mm -hmm. But was that, gift, was that faith supernatural faith? Was it the gift of faith? No. no. If Abraham had the gift of faith, then we are all finished. <laughs> right? Because the gift of faith is not given to everyone. Mm -hmm. The gifts of the Spirit are given to everyone, but the gift of faith is not given to everyone. Mm -hmm. Then we are in trouble. But God had to make salvation accessible. Yes. And so the faith of Abraham is not supernatural in any way, shape, or form. Is a basic faith. Is that basic is faith amazing. that comes when we hear the word, the word of, of God. God. When Abraham heard what God said, he exactly. sided with it, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Oh, righteousness. That's exciting. And so the word of God says in 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 um um uh, in 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 Romans chapter twelve verse three that to every one of us is given the measure of faith. Right. Then we also saw that there is a fruit of faith mm -hmm. and we explain how the fruit of faith works yes. that the fruit of faith comes in when one believer has to deal with the other believer in matters of maturity hallelujah and then after talking about the gift of faith uh the, the fruit of faith then we came and talked about the gift of faith and we said the gift of faith is an operation or operates when god moves through an individual in such a supernatural way mm -hmm. that you cannot begin to wonder whether it was God or it wasn't yeah. God. Now, take note, the way God moves upon that individual is also because God wants to draw a line on the sand. God wants to say, this is me and no one else. Mm, notable miracle that cannot be denied. So what does that say to us? It is an administrative move. Yes. 
It is a move to show the authority of God. It is a move to show the authenticity of God. It is, <laughs> I like that. It is a move to show the gravitas of God. <laughs> like this is me. Boom. Like that. Right? Yes, sir. So, when we are talking about the offices Thank then, you, we will connect faith, the gift of faith, with the gift of working of miracles, right? And the gift of healing. Of now, the, the healing here is gifts with an S of healing. All of the supernatural offices find themselves in operation in the lives of people who are also called to heavily administrate so you would find an apostle having what the bible calls the signs of an apostle mm -hmm. and and that's something that i wanted us to look at tonight so we can um, um understand why we were talking about these things and breaking them like this okay so when we are looking at the signs of the apostle in the word of god thank you father for your faithfulness first of uh, second corinthians chapter 12 second corinthians chapter 12 i mean I, we, we are talking about this because we need to be able to balance the 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 the, the doctrine of the gifts of the spirit making sure that one aspect is in you know carrying more emphasis than the others right mm -hmm. yes we should covet earnestly uh, but that doesn't mean we should go coveting all kinds of things right what god is going to give you he's giving it to you for 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 a reason so first corinthians uh, sorry second corinthians chapter 12 we, we can start reading from verse 11 verse 11 it says i am become a fool in glory Ye have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you. For in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. Truly, the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Now, this is what we are talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Because you could hear apostle and you have to be able to see where the life of an apostle connects with the gifts of the spirit. Right. So he's saying to us, he says, there are signs. Yes. <laughs> there are signs that accompany an apostle. They, they are, whoa, 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 hold on. Mighty deeds. Mm. Mighty deeds spells out walking of miracles. Of miracles. Where you see some things that you're thinking, oh my God, what was that? Oh no, that's the mighty at work. Like someone shadow healing people. Yeah, someone shadow healing, healing people like, like was in the case of, of Peter. Mm -hmm. and, and, and take note of this. While Peter was yet preaching, Acts chapter 10, right? The Holy Ghost fell. Mm -hmm. Now, I am very sure that many of you have wanted to come into that place where you're saying, Holy Ghost fall like that too. And it didn't quite happen. And then you're thinking, ah, God does supernatural things like that because he wants to make a supernatural statement. Mm. <laughs> because he wants to make a supernatural statement. And that is why he would do things like that. So the signs of an apostle were rot, 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 rot. What does that say? It yeah. talks about work. Okay. Right now, if you guys remember when we were talking about the gifts of the spirit, we began to talk about what accompanies the mind, mm -hmm. right? And then the fact that some gifts accompany the hands, what God is doing, the work, and that included faith being one of them, the gifts of healing, right? And then the working of miracles. So when these gifts are in operation, then you can say, whoa, look at what God has wrought. Right? Look at what God has wrought. And so we want to see what God is doing. We want to see how he's growing out bones. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, I, I get it, right? I get it. Maybe for all of the years you have been with your pastor, right? 
You haven't seen him pray for someone and their leg grew out. And then you saw the apostle, he came in, the leg grew out, you're like, that's it. I don't want to be a pastor, I want to be but an apostle. That is not how God works. <laughs> you don't call yourself into office. Yeah, you don't call God yourself calls. into offices. God does that. God does the calling. And when he calls, he equips. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. And so we know that there were mighty signs, wonders, and miracles that happened in the life of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus, the great apostle. Mm -hmm. The word of God says God was with him. And the proof was the mighty signs and wonders. Yes. That were wrought through him. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy yes. Ghost and power. He went about doing good, right? And so on and so forth. Now understand that Jesus' operations were in the Old Testament. Okay? They were in the Old Testament. And like the word of God echoes to us in comparison to the life of Moses. If the ministration... Come on. Okay? If the ministration of that oh, time was like that, that how time. much more how much more the ministration of the New Covenant, Right? So that's exciting. You are about to read. No, go ahead. So, so, so this is powerful for us to, to understand. The Bible says in, in John chapter 4, verse 48, Jesus was saying, like, I kind of know you guys. If you don't see signs and wonders, you will not want to believe. <laughs> the Bible says, Jesus said, said unto him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will never believe. That's what he was saying to them. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? The signs are here. In, in Romans chapter 15, Paul is speaking, verse 19. He says, by the power of signs and wonders, and by the power of the Spirit of God, right? By the power of signs and wonders, and by the power of the Spirit of God. So from Jerusalem all the way, all the way, the gospel was proclaimed, and it was with mighty signs and wonders. Okay, so we're going to, uh, if we read from verse 18, it will Yes, ma'am, go help. ahead, yes. So, um, Romans chapter 15, verse 18. Yes. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me mm -hmm. to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. Through mighty signs and wonders, mm -hmm. by the power of the Spirit of God, yes. so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Eli. Illyricum, yes. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yes. So, first of all, it is interesting, but when you go around, like, right, you cannot see that the word of God says, yeah, go into all the world and preach the gospel, and lo, I'm going to be with you. Then you notice, but wait a minute, I am going around, I'm preaching the gospel like everyone else, or like some of the others. But how come there are isolated incidences in which God magnifies himself in the life of one person more than he does in the life of others. And through that person, you will see churches being birthed. Mm -hmm. Churches. My, my God, there are people, there are people we know who have, I mean, to talk about a thousand churches is like, uh-huh. No, they have well over, yeah. I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of churches. Some, somehow, they, they supernaturally attract people. They seem to operate in a supernatural faith where when they go to a bush country, I'm talking about bush, <laughs> bush, bush country, country. In, in two days, the church is filled up. And you are thinking, huh? How is that possible? Right? Supernatural faith is at work. Okay? Supernatural faith is at work. So let's understand something, child of God. There is somewhere where the offices meet with the gifts. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. There's somewhere where the office is made with Yes. Him. Yes. One in the office of a prophet. Office of a prophet. Hey. I, 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 I like these people. One in the office of a prophet, <laughs> right? Does not just give prophetic words by saying, Thus says the Lord. You can come, you can say, Thus says the Lord, mm -hmm. right? Just like the word of God say, We we'll prophesy according to the proportion, right? Mm -hmm. To the measure. Okay. That has been given unto us. Because that person is operating in an office, you can say what you want to say, and they come and say, not so. Bang, that's it. That office will override whatever has been said. So it is, it is powerful to see how the gifts move with the offices. Mm -hmm. The offices are intended to administrate. The offices are intended to put things in order. 
The offices, when we are talking about putting things in order, we should also say the offices are intended to take out. Right. Take out that which is not supposed to be. That which is disorder. That which is, you know, disorderly, yeah. And then put in that which is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is exciting. That is very, very exciting. <laughs> the signs of an apostle. The signs of an apostle. Now, verse 13. You, you want to continue with verse 13? 13. Yes. The Pauline can not move away from Second the Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. <laughs> All right, verse 13. For what is it wherein ye were inferior to other churches, except it be that I myself was not burdensome to you? Forgive me this wrong. Is that where we are? Yes, verse 13. 13, yes. Yes. Um, verse 14. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. Now you also see, Pastor Pauline, that in Paul's teachings, he begins to bring in this parental fatherhood conversation. Mm -hmm. Because now you're talking about the office of an apostle alongside mighty deeds. Mm -hmm. So someone who's a teacher may not have these mighty deeds and may not have people you know, coming their way and saying, I want you to be my father, my mother, and so on and so forth. And we understand that. But that does not make the person any more inferior. Right. So this is not a, a conversation about inferiority and superiority. No. This is how God is working in the body. This is placement. This is placement. Mm -hmm. Right? That's why we're talking about uh, um, um, placement of spiritual gifts. Right. And that's why we are having this conversation right now. So wherever God has called you to operate, understand yourself and flow in that place. Amen? Amen. Understand yourself and flow in that place. One of the things that we cannot argue about is this knowing that we may not operate in the gift of working of miracles, or the gifts of healing, but we are called to heal the sick. Mm -hmm. Oh, child of God, take pleasure in that. Take pleasure in that. Take pleasure in that. We may not have been called as apostles, but we are called to win souls, as in Matthew 28 or, or, or Mark chapter 16. Mm -hmm. We are called to go into all the world. Mm -hmm. We may not be called to have churches all over us that we oversee, but we are called to build up churches not made with hands. Build lives. Hallelujah. Build to build lives. lives. So we, we ought to be careful not to be, you know, to, to express grandiosity in, in our covetousness or in our coveting of spiritual gifts. Because that's no longer earnest desire. desire of spiritual gifts. It means you're desiring them to... to, to to satisfy your fleshy desires. And, and I don't know that God is going to respond to that. Okay? I don't know that he's going to respond to that. He's not going to give you a gift to spoil you. Right. Or to destroy you. No, he's intending to save you. Right? He's intending to save you. I know, I know, I know. Sometimes, you know, in a place of prayer, someone can say, well, Father, you said in your word that if someone would ask for fish, you will not give them a serpent. So, Lord God, I ask for the gift. I ask for the gift of, of, of working of miracles. Ha, ha, hmm. I grew up very poor, you know, very humble beginnings. Lord, give me the gifts of miracles so I can help the kind of people who are like me. No, you can only pray that prayer effectively if God gave you the prayer topic. If he did not give you the prayer topic, you're praying out of his will and you are trying to elevate yourself, to validate yourself or one of those kind of things. 
and God won't be answering that prayer then. Now, is it possible that later on in your walk with God, you start finding those things manifest in your life? Mm -hmm. Yes. Could it be that God answered that your prayer at that time? Yes. But what else has added? You have come into greater levels of maturity. maturity. Now you are walking with God from a standpoint of purpose and not from the standpoint of self-gratification. Hmm. So motive is a huge, oh, huge, Jesus. huge part of all of this. Yes, yes. That's why no show off. God is big on motives and intentions. Yes. Yes. So, so someone had said, why do we have so many pastors all over the place and we don't even hear them moving in miracle signs and wonders like that? Well, God has a way of doing things. The pastor, child of God, or whoever else is doing this criticism. Do you understand that the pastor is going to be coming to your house and visiting you? Most of the people who walk in miracles, signs, and wonders, they are not coming to your house. <laughs> they don't even know where you live. They don't care about where you live. They, 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 they have a system <laughs> under which they operate. You come to me. Yes. I am not coming to you. And, 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 and there's nothing wrong with that system. Absolutely not. There's nothing wrong with that system because the, 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 the virtue of honor is required. To receive some of these things mm -hmm. from the people who walk in in miracles and and in the gifts of healing and it's the nature of the assignment yes if if their office warrants them to pull large crowds then they are not coming to your house no so so please so. don't don't <laughs> I, I i must say this i must say this when you begin to walk in things like gifts of healings your lifestyle changes it is not intentional, but it changes. Yeah. Maybe before now, you can just walk to the grocery store and buy your stuff, do whatever you want to do. I am telling you, when you come into the fullness of that gift, your life changes. Other people have to do those things for you. Mm -hmm. Because now your life has become so complex that even your security has to be considered. Right. You just cannot eat anywhere. Right? No, you just cannot wake up and go dine wherever you want to. Right? So you, you, you must process it. So if God has given you this, permit me use the term, little pastor, and maybe there are just about 15 of you, he also has the time, or she also has the time, to come and make soup for you when you have a cold. Mm -hmm. Not because they can't pray, but because you are a sheep at that time that requires soup to be made. Yes, I, I, I must say this to you, child. There are of dimensions God. to nurturing. There, so. oh, thank you, sister. <laughs> there are dimensions to nurturing. On a certain day, we pray. On another day, we make soup. Mm -hmm. That is just how it works. On another day, we talk about what the Bible says. On another day, we send you to sleep. Right. Go take a nap. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I like the way um, um, uh, Minister Robert Slyadon said, said it. He said, you know, my mom and grandmom knew how to minister to my head and minister to my behind. <laughs> you know, yeah. there is a place for that. <laughs> right. Right? There's a place for that. Mm -hmm. So as we understand these things, let's understand what God is saying to us. There are people who are listening to us right now who would love to grow in the dimensions of the gifts of healing and dimensions of the walking of miracles. And God is saying, if I bring you into this thing that you're saying, you will not have the time. And if I bring you into this thing that you're asking me, your ministry will crumble because th there isn't a structure to carry to this. Ch it. Child of God, let me say something to you. This is, this is, I believe, the love of God speaking to you right now. Ah, roba shantarabakata. That's right. My pastor just nailed it. Pastors are shepherd and are more concerned with your spiritual growth and upkeep. More than they are, I mean, so, so the, the, the working of miracles is not really what is on their mind. 
-hmm. It is when you came, this is how you were. Mm -hmm. I want to see how you grow. I want yeah. to see how you become. And, and yes, if you grow to the point where you are now operating in the working of miracles, they are excited to see oh, yes. how much God has grown you. Right? So this is, this is exciting. So right. in, in the same token, if you are operating in, in miracle signs and wonders, for example, and they see that you don't have the necessary supporting structures, you are not grounded in, 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 in love, you are not grounded oh. in character, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. they, they have the responsibility to still come in there and establish certain boundaries yes. to keep you in a place where you can become grounded before they are able to extend your parameters again to allow you to soar. And sometimes we see that as a hindrance. Meanwhile, it is a, it's a necessary tool to help us. Hallelujah. So, I mean, I mean, God is God is interesting, right? God is amazing. Making He's a planner. Mm -hmm. He's a planner. So if God is going to call someone into the the office of an apostle, for example, mm -hmm. and bring in spiritual gifts that match with that office, the next thing that is going to happen is the attraction of men and women all over the place who will be human pillars, human support systems to carry on that structure to wherever God desires for it to be. So yes, you have been called as an apostle. You're traveling. Souls are one. Automatically, churches are opening up in different places. Mm -hmm. There should be some pastors right. who buy into what God is doing in your life, right? They buy into your vision, who are going to come under that umbrella and become resident pastors to all of these denominations or churches that are coming up, right? Mm -hmm. And after some time, you will be having teachers. The busier you get, the bigger the personnel. Right. So it is not just spiritual gifts or major offices like that of an apostle or that of an evangelist, right? Just think about it, right, Pastor Pauline? Mm -hmm. Someone is moving has a passion for souls but this evangelistic move in the person's life is within the local church so that person is known as the evangelist mm -hmm. he preaches evangelistic oriented messages, messages. Mm -hmm. okay so he's made head of the evangelist evangelism committee mm -hmm. He plans on how they are going to go out and so on and so forth. He's busy about that. If he's not speaking evangelism, he's not having any other conversation, right? But he's at the level of the local church. The mere fact that God has not given them the structure as yet to grow beyond that local church is an indication that those are his boundaries. But then God will go to someone else and expand them, supernaturally provide equipment, they can go to different countries and put up their equipment, mount up their stage, fly planes, fly people in, distribute thousands and thousands of tracks. Oh no, child of God, now you've come into the gifts. So God who calls you in a specific way also knows how to bring in the things that are required for you to flow accordingly in that place. So this is major for us to understand. Hmm. It's major for us to understand. Hallelujah. So in order not to get into the, the, the negative in terms of covetousness, mm -hmm. it's important to be sensitive to the Spirit of God because you, you might find yourself in that place where Scripture expects us to grow, and there's a desire for everyone to grow. So you might find yourself in that place where you're telling yourself that you are, you know, stagnant, or you are being attacked by the spirit of delay and stagnation. And you, you get on a, maybe a fasting and prayer time to break the spirit of de delay and, and stagnation off of your life because you are telling yourself, I know I have a passion for evangelism mm -hmm. and I'm thinking that 
five years in that I've been doing this evangelism door to door, you know, around my neighborhood, I'm thinking by now I should be doing this at a national level. Mm -hmm. So when I'm seeing other people doing it at a national level or an international level, it might make me feel small. It might make me feel retarded. Okay. And so I get myself into a place of prayer and fasting because I'm thinking there are forces of darkness that are hindering me. They are, they are impeding my progress. Mm -hmm. How do you know the difference between someone who is within the confines of their assignment because that is the capacity that they can handle at the time and someone who is being hindered by the spirit of delay or stagnation? Okay, <clears throat> so let's have this conversation from the roots. Okay. Okay. Because someone might be thinking, okay, I'm being hindered by the spirit of delay, and, and it is not the case. It's God who is saying, I, I am the one keeping you here for right now because I need to solidify your roots before expanding you. Right. And then there is a situation where the person might be thinking, God is the one that has me here to solidify me and expand my roots. Um, uh, solidify my roots before expanding me and God is saying you've encompassed this mountain long enough it's time to go not so how how do you know the difference um so a few things that you said that I'm going to highlight okay number one and I'm, I'm feeling like this okay so very first thing we don't do this thing by how we feel okay that's the first thing mm -hmm. okay number two and God says to you, you have been around this mountain long enough, right? <laughs> so who is the one who's telling you where you are in your growth, God. right? It should be God, right? Okay. So, I, I mean, you kind of answered all of your questions by yourself. <laughs> I noticed that. That's why I started laughing. Good, 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 good. And, and I know why <laughs> you're asking the question. <laughs> it, it's meant so that I answer and then we teach together. Yeah, but you, you've already done the teaching. <laughs> so I'm just going to highlight the answers within what you've said. And then we are doing very well. God is good. Hallelujah. I'll ask it better next time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she just facilitated the, 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 the job for me. So, Pastor Pauline, <laughs> the word of God says major things like, if you're not faithful with another man, who is going to give you yours? Mm -hmm. Key things that we ought to grasp as children of God growing. Now, I'm going to make that statement and pause and go backwards. Okay. Okay. Number one, when God speaks to a person, God speaks releasing his faith while he is speaking. God will not speak to you in unbelief. Right. One. Two, God will not speak to you restrictively. When God speaks to you, he gives you of himself completely. When that comes into you, when that word comes into you, you sense the burning passion of the Lord. Mm. The Bible calls it the zeal of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That passion of the Lord burns in your being. How does it translate? Because to the Lord, a thousand days, a thousand, a thousand years, years is like a day. a day, a day is like a thousand years. How does that translate into your being? It translates as in, get it done now. Right? It translates as in, get it done now. So if you move with that, there will be a problem. But let's look at how God speaks. Okay. Number one, he comes and tells you what the future holds. Mm -hmm. When he comes and tells you what the future holds, it is called the revelation of his calling. Right. He is not just showing you what the future holds. He is showing you your participation in that future. And that move from where you are now to where you're going to be is what a calling is. Mm -hmm. Okay? That is what a calling is. So God calls you from where you are to where he is standing. So we would term that your future coming to your present and visiting you. Right. And saying to you, there is another life for you in the future. Mm -hmm. Why does God do that? So you will begin to change your mindset and begin to orient yourself toward what he has shown you. Right. Now, I can see why in many people's lives it translates as in delay because you want that future quick. How do many of us see that future? You see it as standing in front of crowds. Mm. 
You see it as in people screaming and miracles happening and you are the one on the stage. Mm -hmm. You see it as waving your hand and people are being slain. God shows you these things depending on what he is calling you, you into. into. Because not everybody will be right. doing that and right. people will be slain and so on and so You could see yourself so feeding thousands of people. You could right. see yourself traveling to different nations yes. to visit orphans because you have orphanages right. in different places. You could see yourself training soldiers. Training, right. About, I mean, how about those who see themselves washing pots and mm -hmm. plates and mm -hmm. dishes and, 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 and all of those kind of things? That is another, another place, mm -hmm. right? But when you see yourself in these kind of places that we have described, you must also remember that when one is called, they are also told when to execute. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, there's a, 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 a time lapse between when you're called and when you execute. Right. There's something that happens in between. Good. And, and from the time you're called to when you execute, there is a process that kicks in. It is the process of the potter's wheel. Mm. You are going to be made into the vessel <laughs> that will carry the oil of God. The word process. Because you are not going to go doing those things without the oil of God. Right. So he is going to make out of you a vessel oh, worthy to you, carry Jesus. the oil of God. Amen. Because everything you're going to do is literally oil being poured. Mm -hmm. Whether you're laying hands on the sick mm -hmm. or doing dishes, mm -hmm. Is all oil being poured. Yes. So during that process, God will give you what belongs to someone else and see how you handle it. Mm. God will give you, so you will have the test of a different person's ownership. That is that season, guys. I know. Lord have mercy. <laughs> God will give you the test of someone else's ownership. God will give you the test of excellence whether you have the proclivity of doing things and doing them well, you will also have that test. God will give you the test of integrity. Mm -hmm. Do you mean what you say and say what you mean? So you'll be tested in the area of your words. Mm -hmm. All of this happens within that process before you're fully launched, before the day of your manifestation. Mm -hmm. Test of diligence. A test of diligence, <laughs> a test of faithfulness. A test of the word. Yes. Right? Yes. A test of dependence. Oh, Lord, have mercy. A test of long suffering. <laughs> a test of lack, Pastor Pauline. Oh. A Lord. test of what? Lack. lack. <laughs> right? Pastor Pauline. The first day I met you, you were preaching the gospel from door to door. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, that was years ago. It has taken time. This is not witchcraft. <laughs> no, 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 no. It is not witchcraft. It is not the devil. It has taken time for God to mold you inside out and bring you to where you are now that people are saying, whoa, I want to be like that woman of God. Now, the oil of God is attracting people and has made you a thing of love. Right? The first day I met you, I was looking at you. From that day that you saw me until now, this is not the same person. Definitely not. This is not the same person. So God grows us so that we can conform to the assignment he has given us. Yeah. And child of God, permit me say this, you will grow throughout all of your life. Yes. <laughs> The okay. process continues. You will also have a test of humility. Yes. Oof. It's like saying, God will give you 10,000. Hmm. And then, one fine day when you come, 5,000 have left the church. And then you're thinking, the <laughs> devil, I bind him. Yes, he was trying to break my church. Yeah, 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 I get that. I, child of God, believe me. I get that, that the devil wanted to break your church. But the question is, what kind of heart did you end up with? After that incident. Yeah. Right? Right? Mm -hmm. Do you treat the sheep as your sheep or God's sheep? Mm. Do you make statements like, nobody oh. can do this in my church. This is my church. You cannot do this in my church. Mm. Believe me, God will come to you and make you know that it is his church. It's 
my sweat, blood, and tears. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So, so these are different areas where Ooh. God is going to train you and see what you become because he is not going to give his most precious material to one that the devil can easily attain. And also how you, 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 you behave towards the people who have left yes. your church. Right. When you see them, how do you behave? How do you behave? What are the things you say about them? Yes. So all of that is a thing, right? All of that is a thing. And sometimes God can bring you to a broadcast like this one. And then listens in on the comments of your heart. Oh. It is still a test. Yeah. Right? So God will school you in all of these kind of things. I remember the day I was watching TV and I said, huh, I can preach better than that guy. And then God said to me, yeah, he's preaching you or not. <laughs> Out. 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 Whoa. God knows how to hit you. That's right. Out. Out. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and I was like, Jesus. Yes. No one can sting better than God. No. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Woo. Knock out all foolishness out of your system That's with right. one word. That's right. That's right. The and, and, blood and so, of Jesus. And so God knows how to do those kind of things, right? So, so it is true. We want to become like yesterday. And God yeah. says, I need to trim these things. So you start out, right? You are flowing in the gifts of the spirit. You are doing these laying hands and things are happening. Now you're bigger than your pastor. <laughs> mm. And God is waiting for you at the street corner. <laughs> God is waiting for you at the, at the street corner. And then he comes and, 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 and clips your wings. <laughs> Now you prophesy and you tell someone, yeah, I see you. And then this and then that depends. Yeah, not me. Not me. <laughs> and that's in, a, a, that's in a crowd. And that's in a crowd and you're like, oh, Jesus. No, it is you. It is you. Are you, are you trying to say that God did not talk to me? <laughs> that is your fight, child of God. <laughs> that is your problem. You are the one right on there. trial. You are the one on trial. So if you don't handle that well, guess what? You are toast. You go back a few steps. And God has to now speak to you in your private place. Yeah. I mean, you guys will bear with me, especially here in the United States, especially in the past four or five years. There are many prophetic voices that have been tried. Oh, yes. Oh, I mean, I don't yes. want to want to get into the details. They have been tried in matters of integrity. They have been tried mm -hmm. in all. My God, we've had all kinds of trials. Mm -hmm. You know, one day we respect you as the voice that comes and says, Stop, says the Lord. God said, God said, God said. And then the other day you come and say something and everybody's saying, Hmm. And then it's been how long now? God didn't say, and nothing turned out the way you said it. The opposite and happened. The opposite happens, and there is no integrity to apologize or one of those kind of things. You know, there's a lot of trial Hi. that Hi. so many people have gone through. Listen to me, child of God. I wonder. How a lying spirit found its way to prophetic voice, voices that speak to the nation and to the government. That's interesting. That's a conversation for another day. So let's just leave it there. So my point is, we do not outgrow God. So never Ooh. come into a place of ministry and begin to think, oh, now I am so grown that I am more authentic than God is. We have to remain under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes, amen. We have to remain under the shadow of the Almighty. Mm. There is no rush to manifest God where He is not manifesting. There is no rush to manifest God where He is not manifesting. Yeah. Because if you're not careful, you're going to push people in the name of laying hands on people. Oh, Lord have mercy. Haven't some of us been pushed? Have you not been pushed before? Right? So, <laughs> so we really want to be in a place where God is helping us to... to, to to really be Ooh, what he wants to us to be. Our heart has to be the heart of God. As yes. shepherds of the Most High God, we must love the sheep. Oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> mm. We have to love, love the, the sheep. sheep. We have to bring ourselves to the place where we are driven 
by compassion. Right? Because we can give all the prophetic words we want to give and, and say all the things that we want to say. But at the end of the day, if, if the love of God isn't there, then we are tingling symbols. Chinking symbol. Right? Yeah. No. I don't want to be chinking, 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 chinking when I'm trying to really say God loves you. Right? Right? No. That's not how we want to flow. That's the reason why it was very important for us to talk about um, um, the interaction between the offices and the gifts, mm -hmm. where they all meet. So we don't go coveting what we are not supposed to covet. Because the word of God says covet NSD, the, the, the most precious gift. Child of God, believe me, I still remember, and I can go to the room where I was at the ministry. I can go to the room. I was there with one of my brothers, and, and we were quoting that scripture and saying, yeah, the word of God says we should covet NSD, the most gift. And then we put uh, the, the best gift, and then we put the Bible on the floor, and then we stood on it. Father, in the name of Jesus, Shaka Baba. I remember that particular day when we were praying and rain was falling. And then, of course, we were moved by our flesh, and, and, and as it was thundering, and there were lightnings, and, 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 and so we were like, yeah, the power is coming. Roba shakapata. God is answering us. <laughs> but the rain was sorry, I was like, but are you guys are deeper. <laughs> but that's the thing. When, when, when your drive is Ooh, power and might, oh, yeah. that's what you get. And, and who is driven by power and might? It's one who is conscious that they are small. Yes. Oh, it's one that that's conscious so that they are small. True. You're driven by power and might, and you don't even see it coming. Hey, in the days hmm. when we were the ministers hey. of God, hey, 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 hey. that the man of God, <laughs> you could not tell us anything. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 the man of God. We. <laughs> <laughs> I thank God for my pastor. I've been delivered like 1,000 times from foolishness. My God. <laughs> so I'm listening, you did that too. Hallelujah. <laughs> who's, who's asking if I did that too? Pastor Evelyn, so you did that too. <laughs> you have no clue. You have no clue what we have been delivered from. I mean, if you are a child of God, you will be delivered from the flesh. Yes. You will be delivered from the attributes of carnality. <laughs> okay? You'll be delivered from those things. It's a Christmas word, Pastor Peter. You see, that's a reason. <laughs> that's... Why do you think I'm teaching today? Because I have been down there. You know? Been in crazy places. <laughs> so I can look at you and I say, Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Help this one. Because I can already see the journey that you're going to go through. Because God wants to deliver you. Listen, it is the hand of mercy. Oh, yeah. Because... If not Ooh. of the Lord, I am telling you, if not hey. of the Lord, we will not be talking the way we are talking right now, and we will not ascend to the levels mm. that we ascend in ministry. Jesus. Because the devil has plans of taking you under your high horse mm -hmm. and leveling you out. If you make it to heaven, hallelujah. Because, <laughs> I mean, with that kind of thing, you're headed for hell. So mm. God has to deliver you yes. from these aspects of the flesh. And, and I must say this. Listen, there is no age conversation in this. No. You're 40 mm -hmm. years old, you do it. You're 20 years old, you do it. You're 70 years old, you do matter. it. You are in competition with the five-year-old. It doesn't matter whether you're six or you're 69. It doesn't matter, right? So the competition is there, and God comes to deliver us from the competition. I am telling you, it gets, it gets really interesting to see how... <laughs> it gets really interesting to see what we become because we had two dreams that happened. Hey. Right? Forensic manifestations. <laughs> Put the pictures together, pam, pam, pam. Yeah. Connect the videos with a serious sound to match it. And then now you have become the, 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 the superior of of the prophet. <laughs> Mother superior <laughs> of all the other prophets. No, this, this, the, listen guys, I, this, I, I is, think, this is, this is I think that's good. why it's important to have a pastor. I'm yes. telling you, it is a huge blessing to have a pastor. Oh, my. And not just, I mean, when I talk about uh, Jeremiah 315, a pastor that God has given you, <laughs> and you have to settle that that is the voice you have decided to honor before they begin to really pastor you. Because if you have not settled 
on that day when you are operating at this level of the things we are talking about, they will not be able to speak to you. Because even if they speak, you will conclude that they are jealous of you. Yeah. You will conclude that you are too anointed for them. I've met people who have told me, um, um, I don't belong to any church because I have not yet found the person who is qualified to pastor me. I just say, God bless you, brother. <laughs> I was like, okay. God bless you. <laughs> In me, I'm saying, please, stay far away from me. Yeah. Because that is disaster waiting to happen. And the person has a, an unteachable spirit. They have settled. Nobody is qualified to pastor them. Again, Pastor Pauline, it's when you don't realize that it is a child in you that is crying and screaming help because that small you is the one who is saying i want but a big thing so when i attach myself to that big thing everyone who saw me small will, will suddenly see me big. know uh, that i've changed levels <laughs> so, so so that is what people do right wow there was a time in my life when i i i my god i was ambitious Yes, like ambitious. And, and it, the, the point is how this ambition hides in a cloak of portraying God, yeah. bringing God to the people. No, but it is your ambition. And that is what makes it dangerous. The devil disguises as an angel of light. And ambition is considered a work of the flesh. There's yes. a, an aspect of ambition that is a work of the flesh. Yes. So it's important for us to be able to... Ooh. And ah, it is so important. So settle, please. Settle when things are nice and dandy on who is going to be the voice that speaks into your life. So that when you are on that high horse, <laughs> on that high tangent, I, when I, you hear their voice, you will still hear. I, I have to tell this story. Please. How you and I were at World Changers Church. <laughs> this is Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, God. Pastor Creflodon. Mm -hmm. We are in the service. Mm -hmm. The first thing that happened was they called out people who wanted to be part of the uh, um, Association of Ministers. Mm -hmm. And I tried to stand. <laughs> and I couldn't wake up from my seat. God said, this is where you sit. Sit <laughs> down. Okay, so I thought, okay, um, there is another way we can do this. Um, and then at some point, they said, <laughs> ministers interact, interact with people, you know, pass around your business card and so on. And God said, keep it in your pocket. <laughs> I said, but, but they said that we should give out business cards. He said, not you. <laughs> And I thought, is this a problem? God just hates me, right? God just hates me. He just wants me to stay right here. So that's the reason why, you know, someone may hear the question that you asked. And except we visit this side of things, may not see the relevance. Yeah. But I am telling you, there are many of our brothers and sisters who are currently going through some of the mess that we found ourselves in. Mm -hmm. So the truth about it is that, you know, after that whole business card thing, the service was over. Then you and I stayed at the parking lot. <laughs> yes. Everybody is leaving. We are not leaving. <laughs> because we are looking for who we should distribute a business card to. And so it was like, <laughs> we, we, we had high plans. <laughs> Nicely designed business card. Yeah. And you don't even realize that in this um, 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 obsession of, of, of beautifully designing the business card is hidden covetousness. Yeah. The desire to preach on pulpits that God didn't ask you to preach on. Mm -hmm. The desire to be recognized by people. Right? Names. My God, this is just terrible. And, and we, we, we have that happening today. There's a lot of name calling, mm -hmm. you know, where someone wakes up and says, oh, just so you know, I know so and so and mm -hmm. know so and so. It is of no consequence. Do you know the Holy Ghost? Mm, come right? on. It is of no consequence. Do you know the Holy Ghost? And so we stayed at that parking lot and God made sure that we didn't distribute any business card to anyone don't. until the parking lot was dry. Mm -hmm. And then we, you know, with shamefacedness, we drove out of the place and <laughs> kept the business cards and, and, and found our way back home. Yeah. He didn't permit us giving, give out no, even one. No, he did one. not permit not us even give one. even one business card. Mm -hmm. Child of God, I'm talking about you being part of a group, right? Let's say, you know, the ladies at church cook food. Mm -hmm. And then you believe so much 
in your meal being the best, mm -hmm. you've not tasted the others, mm -mm. but you are the best cook. Yeah. And then you must announce that this food that is here, everybody hey. has to eat but this one. Because this thing manifests itself in all kinds of subtle ways. Yeah. In all kinds of subtle ways. How about being among ministers and you must have the bigger name? Mm -hmm. And then people go as far as, hey, 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 don't call me pastor, I'm a prophet. Eh? <laughs> I'm a prophet. Okay, that's okay. Forgive me, sir. But you're a child of God now, sir. Oh my, you know, whichever. not call them sister or brother, you're in trouble. I mean, we, we, we've had someone who decided that they will not be a minister under us because I called them sister. Mm -hmm. And that was it. The relationship was over on that day. Mm -hmm. But you are a brother and you are a sister. sister. Uh, what else can you be? I mean, I call you sister. Don't I call you sister? <laughs> yeah, every day. <laughs> Yeah, because, I mean, we, we have to understand That's this only when you want to make a point. Uh, when I want to make a point. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but this is the point, right? But we say Jesus every day. I know, <laughs> nobody says Mr. Jesus. We don't Jesus. even say Mr. Jesus, no, Prophet no Jesus. <laughs> Hi, but nobody can call us by our name. Mm -hmm. We are ready to fight. Yeah, we pull out the machete. The devil is a liar. The sword of the spirit. <laughs> Take you out. So, child of God... The Lord is walking in our lives oh, hallelujah and he is going to be walking in you because you are going to represent his name, carry his name, carry the oil of yeah. God and be his face to the world. Amen. So do not be surprised when it comes after you on certain things that you do. I remember the day the Lord said to me, so man of God, you're ready to preach. And I'm thinking, yes. He said, uh, so you're ready to preach and your room is, on, is not made up. <laughs> I know you guys might be asking me now, what has your room being made up got to do with preaching? Everything. 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 <laughs> everything. everything. Hallelujah. Everything. Mom will always say, as in a natural soul in the spirit. Yes. If she steps into your room and it looks all ramshackle. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You're not taking, she's not giving you her microphone. Your life is as scattered as your room looks. I mean, we are talking about <laughs> how, how she would come to us and say, and say, if you have undergarments piled mm -hmm. that have not been cleaned, mm -hmm. and you know how they look. It's mm -hmm. not like you don't know how they look. Right. You know how they look. You know how you're piling them over there. Mm -hmm. Then I wonder how you are in the spirit. Right. Because if you can neglect that in the natural, I wonder what you're neglecting you're in the spirit. You're neglecting a whole bunch in the realm of the spirit. Then, you know, I, I remember those who developed from just putting them in one corner to putting them in water and never touching them for days. Of course, that stinking presents... Stinking up the whole place. Right. Stinking the whole place. It, it produced something else. But you really want to be organized in the spirit. I remember someone saying, why do I have to make up my bed? I'm going to climb on it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. All right. Well, you shouldn't have plates you've eaten from in your room. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are talking about in things your in, car, in your car, under the seats of your car. Oh, Jesus. Plates with. Hold on, hold on. Are we still talking about the anointing? Oh, about, yes. About the gifts of the Definitely. Spirit? Oh, Jesus. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, child of God, it's a new day in the glory, <laughs> and we are becoming better and better. On Amen. a daily basis, right? Hallelujah. God loves Amen. us. Amen. Woo, 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 woo. God is good. God is good. Yes. So, child of God, guess We're what? by God. You see an apostle, and you notice that he's very organized. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, does it take all that? Yes, it does. And that's how they're meticulous with the instructions. Yeah. Even prophets, when yeah. they give you an instruction, if they say two people to the right, two <laughs> people to the left. It better be it two people. It's not two it's and not a three. half. Mm -mm. No. They will send all of you back yeah. if you don't follow an instruction. Right. If they say put on the envelope on the right hand side, you put it on the left hand side, you're taking your envelope back. That's right. And you can think like what is a big deal? It's just no. It's because they come from they order. They come from order <laughs> and they understand the power behind order. That's right. And that's not something you can mess with. I would never forget I remember an incident when I was supposed to God, God had instructed me to call mom. I was supposed to call her on a certain day, and I didn't. 
The next day, I, I said, oh, time difference. I'm going to call her. By the time I was getting myself ready to call her, she called. When I saw my phone ring and she was the one, I was like, oh, no, this is not good. <laughs> because the Holy Ghost had told me to call her three days prior. I didn't. So the moment I'm picking up the phone, I'm already panicking. And I'm saying, Mom, I'm so sorry. I know I was supposed to call you three days ago. And in her usual calm <laughs> way, she just said, so you can afford to be three days late in the realm of the spirit. Just like that. This is where the camera points at me and I say, <clears throat> because... You can't afford to be late three days in the spirit, right? Oh, jeez, glory. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so, so, Pastor Pauline, this is the point, you know, I, I, and it's important for all of us to understand this. We, we are literally talking about the ins and outs of flowing in the glory. Mm -hmm. The ins and outs of flowing in the glory. God mm -hmm. wants us to know these things because when he brings you under someone, there is a level of connectivity yes. that is not ordered by the human realm. Mm -hmm. It is ordered by the spirit realm. It is ordered by God. Mm -hmm. And God does not need cell phones. No, he doesn't. Because in the spirit, <laughs> he can download information at any time. That's right. And, and it doesn't have to ring. No one needs to know that he's talking to you at the time. They just find the manifestation of his voice. <sighs> as it is transporting you. Yeah. So this is powerful, right? That's why it's important to be prompt because yes. I don't know how many I mean how many of you of you have had experiences where you have an information, you finally call the person to give them the, the word and they told you, Oh, yeah, that happened to me two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> and and sometimes you 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 find a way of, of downplaying or simplifying the scenario right but it just shows that you are incompetent good news is not good news when it's delivered late oopsie so you 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 find yourself in a place where you realize if you're honest with yourself you are incompetent if god gave you that word for that person two days ago it was supposed to to bring deliverance to them two days ago it was supposed to give them a sense of direction two days ago now you are telling them two days later after the incident has happened and to you, it's okay because you are giving the word of the Lord. No, sister, brother, you're late. You're late. It's no longer good news. Yeah. So you are incompetent in your service. Yes. And God has to help us to understand that the king's business requires oh, haste. Oh, Jesus. May God help mm. us. May God help us. You know, Pastor Pauline, these things that we have talked about today, they never get old. And you come to a certain level of growth and God comes back into your life and, and walks on that again. And you're thinking, oh, I thought, I thought I'd outgrown this. No, it's not about outgrowing something. Mm -hmm. It's about realizing that there are greater levels, greater measures, yes. and God requires better from us at every instant. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Wow, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. Hallelujah. We are going to turn things over to the table of exchange. Minister Obi is going to be coming up. Um, with some two other wonderful Hallelujah. ministers to Hallelujah. lead us through this session. But it was wonderful spending time with you again, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Kanga Household of Faith, where we bring to you the word of restoration in, in the, the spirit, spirit of, of faith. faith. So, child of God, remember that. Remember that. Amen, Mom. God, God <laughs> has a way. <laughs> May God have mercy on us. That's right. That's right, Mom. Amen. You know, remember that it is oh, the, the spiritual gifts at some point can can happen for everyone you know paul was speaking and he said oh i don't I, it doesn't matter to me everyone can prophesy mm -hmm. in fact i want that everyone should prophesy yes. you see that so there is that level but you cannot go on this other side and say i want that everyone should walk in the gifts of 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 um of gifts of healing mm -hmm. you know the gifts of healing no because it would distort god's order mm -hmm. that's why he didn't make that statement as pertaining to that right Neither did he make the statement as pertaining to the walking of miracles. Mm -hmm. 
right? You hear, you hear the stories of some people. You hear how they, they went to a construction site and raised their hand and prayed in the name of Jesus and construction material was multiplied. Mm -hmm. Why do you hear just one of such stories? That's definitely a gift of faith. In the right? That's a gift of faith at mm -hmm. work, the gift of working of miracles at, at work. You know? Um, Pastor Griffith says, this was a great night. Be blessed, pastors. Thank you very Amen. much, woman of God. Please extend our love to your household. Amen. Tell the man of God that we, we, we have him in, on our prayer list. God has a whole lot to do over there. Hallelujah. Amen. So it, it is such a beautiful thing to see how God is moving in the lives of people. Yes. And um, we look forward to more. We look Amen. forward to more. Amen. Um, God is so specific. He comes over here and he says, I am going to use the apostle in a certain way. And mm -hmm. I'm going to use the prophet in a certain way. And I'm going to use the evangelist in a certain way. Mm -hmm. He takes these three offices that, that go beyond the four walls of the church. And he begins to use them to make powerful and significant statements, statements. here and there. Mm -hmm. And so you begin to find the gift of faith in the lives of those people. Mm -hmm. You find the walking of miracles Miracle. in the lives of those people. You find the gifts, gifts of, of healing. healing. In the lives of those people S significant amazing amazing um i was listening to to something the other day and and um pastor chris Oyakilome, you know ha is having this powerful program i was seeing the numbers the other day you know uh, based on facebook algorithms and so on they were able to register you know over a billion people watching around the world actually over two billion people watching around the world and and, and the miracles the miracles my god it is so powerful and the fact that some of these people are, are getting miracles watching online right you know watching online this is this is really powerful and and and, and please i think the program is still on you can you can still tune in and uh, uh be a beneficiary of that remember gifts of the spirit for mm. for, for us to profit with yes. with, with everyone mm. so so much is happening over there and and um in case you need God to move in a special way. You can see that happening over there. And so we are excited at what God is doing. Amen. We are excited at what God is doing. And, and we are looking forward to seeing more. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We'll bless Jesus. your holy name. Be exalted, O God. Even tonight, we ask, Father, that there will be a staring up. That understanding will be our portion. That we will know where we belong. We will know how to administer that which you have given us from a place of love, from a place of compassion, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, to those who have um, um, time to spend in the furnace until such a time as you see fit, may you continue to walk in our lives, oh God, that we may indeed come out tried and ready for the master's use thank you father thank you, in jesus name amen amen amen, amen. amen. we pray for anyone who is sick tonight anyone with a prayer topic which we rebuke the hand of wickedness um, against your life in the name of jesus may god shift things for you in jesus name there's someone while we we're praying um, god began to talk to me about you you have pain you know, like a, like a, 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 like something is poking you on the left side of your back. Your le the left side of your back. The healing power is coming Thank upon you. Lord. That arrow is taking off of you now you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Freedom is your portion Hallelujah. in Jesus' name. Well, Amen. God bless you. Uh, Minister Amen. Grace Tangy, God bless you. Minister Hello, Rose, woman of, of God, God bless you. Good to have all of you Hello, on. Mr. Angel Caraballo. Good to see you. Hey, again, bless sir. you, sir. Good to have you. Hallelujah. God bless you too. God bless you too. Hallelujah. Praise God. Bless you, First Lady of Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Please, guys, whenever you watch the broadcast and you have questions, make sure you ask your questions. Um, the administrator is always um, good at posting questions so we don't. Um, bypass them and if they have bypassed them tr try that again try that again and we should be able to 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 respond to those in the name of jesus amen 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 amen, amen. we hope you're all registered for whims whoa whims is coming listen <laughs> whims is going to be interesting it's going to be interesting we have people who have registered from several places around the world 
And we are just excited that it's November, you know? Yes. Yeah, November. Yes, November the is month a, of harvest. Month of harvest, month where things are going Thank to be you, delivered Jesus. unto us. It's going to be wonderful in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, guys. Amen. Offering time, blessing time, sowing and time, um, sowing time, time, exchange time. Exchange time. All of the times. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And talk to you all very soon. Love you all. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> My <Yeah>. God. Uh, <laughs> where, where, where do we begin? At the beginning. At the beginning. At the, at the beginning. What is it? At the beginning. At the beginning. Big side joke, guys. My God. So, Man of God has lost me. I know. <laughs> I know. It speak now. Like, when Pastor Peter, Pastor Pauline is talking about the gap between when you are called and when to execute. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, huh. So it's like, in Woo. between that growing process Mercy, that goes right. on. Listen. And then, I mean, there have been a lot of stories and a lot of laughter, <clears throat> right? But I'm believing that through all that laughter, through all the stories that might seem like a joke, yes. you were able to pick something out of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You were able to pick something out of it that it just didn't just go past you. Right. Right. We, 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 the assignment is God. Mm, come on. Ooh, Say that one more time. Say the assignment again. is God. Yes. And we cannot... Yeah. Be more zealous. I think we have yeah. said this a couple of times here. Yeah. You cannot be more zealous than God Himself. No, right? yes. you can't. At the end of the day, like, listen. The gift, the <laughs> gift is, you, I, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot sit down and say, yes, I'm the big man of God. Right. So right. everybody come look at so me. So the Lord will humble you. Because oh, no. it's not mine to begin with. That's it's, right. It's, it's That's right. You know what? It's I think you guys right. should say something. Yeah, right. I, 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 this is why I love and I, I cherish, this is one of my favorite scriptures, Romans 8, 28. Mm -hmm. okay. And we know, and the Amplified Version adds, with great confidence that God, that he works things out for our good. Right. So we have to have that belief that in the, the midst of this process, man, I, I talk about the process all the time because <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's not easy. But when going through it. Right? Right. Exactly. We're all going it, through it. We're all, all through it. going through it. But if we can just stay focused on right. Romans 8, 28, all right. things work together for right. good because God right. has a plan. The Amplified Version tells us that God has a plan, that this is a plan of his. So if we can just stay focus on 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 the assignment stay focused on god understanding that at the end it is for our good it is for our good we can't go to the nations all broken busted and disgusted we have to make sure we are aligned he will with not allow. he will not allow it will and not. just like we think it is the spirit of delay it's god processing us i like that god processing yes. us and i love when uh pastor peter used his own life as a Oh, I love it. Like, I love it. You see how you know, like follow the man of God and then it's like, hey, you went through that too? Oh, and yes. like, wow. So it's really good to see how our pastors are sharing their own experience, right? Yeah. So it makes you think like, uh, so you cannot say like, oh, you do not know what I'm going through because you, you were not there. Mm -hmm. So it, Jeremiah 315 then really shows us yeah. like I'll give you pastors according to my heart because yeah. those pastors I dragged them to what you're going through so they Absolutely. know exactly what you're going through yeah. and yeah, yeah. Be like, so if yes. we don't say Mr. Jesus yeah. chill chillax chillax yes right. <laughs> we don't call you master prophet chair relax <laughs> it's okay you are a child of God and that is what's most important that you are a child of God yes so yes. it, what a yes. night. What so, a night. in this atmosphere, we want to do the offering. <laughs> Here you go, table of exchange. You can download via Zelle, Cash App. Mm -hmm. yes. Cash App. And there is also the website where media will post it for you. But just in case, you can download, uh, send it to 301 
900-900-9102. And man of God, woman of God, this is the month of delivery. And I yes. remember the prophetic Amen. word that Pastor Peter said. Amen. And in that prophetic word, that was the instruction. Amen. That some people's heart will be um, touched to sow. To sow. And when you sow, ministry doors will be opened unto you. Maybe Amen. that is for you. Amen. If you think you've been delayed, maybe God is saying like, well... The sewing part. This radical, is the month. Minister Felicity, radical sewing. Radical sewing. Yes. And doors, ministry opportunities will be Amen. open Amen. unto you. So with that, I'm saying, like, whatever the Spirit of God is putting in your heart, women of God, men of God, do it. Go radical on it. Do not hold back because you will come back with a harvest running over Shaking over, Amen. press down, it will be given unto you. <laughs> Come on. Amen. And everything that she said, if it's new to you, is from last week ministration where the prophetic word yes. came out. So you can revisit the message mm -hmm. and get more information mm -hmm. so that when you are giving, you know what God has said and you put your seat where it's yes. supposed to be. Amen. 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 Yes. You want to pray for us? Yes, yes, yes. So Father, I thank you for those that you for those that are sowing tonight, oh God. Father, I pray that you will give them an overload. That even right now, as you declare in the prophetic word, Father God, that in this season, as they sow their seed, Father God, the doors of opportunities will be open Amen. for them, Father God. Even now, Father God, as the Holy Spirit is touching the heart, Father God, we ask that they will be obedient to your touching, Father God. They will be quick to do, Father God, quick to be obeyed, so that you, Lord, can move on their behalf. And Father God, I thank you for each and everyone that desire to sow, but yet do not have the that you will make a way for them, Father God, to sow into your kingdom. So, Father God, we thank you and thank we give you, you glory Jesus. and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Guess what, y'all? What? what? Whips us next week! <laughs> Man. whims whims listen that's all that matters right now okay yeah. it's whims every other announcement we will announce after whims oh, but at this moment <laughs> it's whims, whims is you know like what literally whims stand for what women for? women in ministry no Some a little bit yeah come on now give some more Oof. some vigor children of god who are women <laughs> of christ <laughs> in ministry right <laughs> so it's not just women as them i'm going absolutely That's so right. yes. women in ministry yes. Yes. that's next that's week y'all that yes. is next week next week we have been speaking about this since i think the end of september yes when it came to us so you right. don't want to miss this you don't want to we this. have some holy spirit has some things in store for you for me, for you, for, and you, and me. all of us. Yes. So please, 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 um, lodging is to capacity. However, you can still attend. It's Friday um, service, Saturday service, and Sunday service. Come prepared, get ready to be fully equipped, to be launched out, to be kicked off of that nest like the, the baby eagles do. You have to come. <laughs> please come. You don't want to be told about this event. It's free 99. It's free We are not charging you to come to this event. It is free. It is okay? free. Yes. So it cannot get any better than that. Food will be, pro will be provided yes. if we're not fasting. But it's free. Like, honestly, you really want to come to this event and be launched out into the woman or the man of God that God has created. We have yes. been speaking about the manifestation of spiritual gifts. Yes. You may not know about it yet, but still, well, you've heard about it, but you want to you wanna be activated in it. Yes. So come on out and, and just get ready to, to be prepared to hear from the man of God, to hear from whoever else is going to be speaking. It's going to And maybe be you'll be speaking. Awesome. Speaking. Maybe you will be speaking. So next week, and November. We you. Yes. <laughs> You. November 12th, 13th, and the 14th. Whims free. The link, I believe, will be posted below. Register, 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 and we will see you then. Well, before then, we'll see you on Thursday. Yes. So, you have just watched the Conge Household of Faith, where we're bringing you the word of restoration in, in the, the spirit of, of faith. faith. Good God night. bless you. See you Thursday. Don't forget Bye to Zoom. do your assignment. You're a woman that does this. Oh, yes. yes. Does this, too. Yes. Amen. That's it. 
Thank you. Bye. See you Thursday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.